she's really sitting so that she can see everyone she can see in my room she can see in her room over there she can see the stairs see you spread out like that for you raw chicken a little raw chicken miss bindi hi you're like a nice little pet pet yes we went for a long walk today huh you're probably very tired sweet puppy puppy say I'm supposed to be reading Queen of Nothing right now. I am like, I don't know how far I am because I'm reading it on my phone. But you know, halfway, maybe. Um, I'm enjoying it. It's fine so far. I think I was spoiled on Twitter. So we love that. Actually, we, we don't love that. Hold on. I'm watching. Anyone else watch Bad Boys Club with Jane and Osh? It's a key. Wait, I wasn't done petting you. So yeah, that's my update for Queen of Nothing so far. It's not great. But it's fine. I really like Jude as a character still. I'm ready for more interaction between her and Cardin because those are some of my favorite moments of the series. If you don't know, I'm sure you do because literally everyone will not stop talking about it. Queen of Nothing is the third and final book in the Folk of Air trilogy thing, aka The Cruel Prince, The Wicked King, Queen of Nothing. You know what it is. I don't need to sit here and explain it. You are, I'm guaranteeing that you know. I'm so red. <laughs> This is what happens when I try to try to get exercise. <laughs> Actually, this happens when I do anything, but like also that. Okay, that's the update. I'm gonna keep reading or keep watching Bad Boy Club. I don't know. So before any of you try to drag me for having blue eyeshadow on, just know that it's because I at last minute decided to see Frozen 2 tonight because it's the Thursday night that it comes out. I was surprised that a lot of people weren't at the later showings. I guess I shouldn't be surprised. It's a Thursday, it's a kid's movie, but whatever, there was a good seat. So I was like, why not? Whitney is going, so that's basically why I wanted to, so we could discuss and she wouldn't accidentally or purposely spoil me. But last night I did finish Queen of Nothing and my thoughts are pretty much my thoughts on the rest of the trilogy if you know this is a four star series for me every book including Queen of Nothing now is a four star the reason they never get past that for me why they've never made it to full five stars is because I just think Holly Black does a very poor job at world building and fleshing things out these books are so short and so fast because there isn't any of that. She kind of relies on people already knowing about fey culture and fey politics when in reality she's like the court of termites and the sealies and the unsealies and I'm like what the hell are you talking about? I don't know. And none of that's ever explained and because none of it's ever explained it's able to make these books really fast and really easy and fun to read which is a plus but it makes it so that it's not rich enough to ever become like a super super favorite for me like it is for a lot of people. What makes these books as good as they do is the characters and the characters continue to be fabulous in this installment jude i love her so much because she's a badass character who's not only badass with a physical weapon but she's badass with her mind she's one of the smartest characters in ya and i just really look up to her and admire her and she's amazing Cardin is the perfect like villain to hero sort of thing i don't really know how you would describe his arc in this book but he's just a very complex character and we get to learn more about his background in this book which I really appreciated as it does explain a lot of his character and Jude and Cardin together are just a dynamic duo. Their scenes are so good and I loved how they shifted a little in this one. I'm not gonna say how because spoilers but I think just watching their relationship arc has been really really rewarding and just such a good one. They're so good. I enjoyed the plot of this book at first in like the first half or so I was not bored necessarily but I was kind of wanting to get a move on things but then you kind of see things come around and you're like okay the beginning those parts I understand why they're there now. It was fast paced definitely this is literally like 300 pages. One thing that was a downer for me though was that when the big twist happens in the book and you'll know when you get there. For me it was very obvious what the next course of action was going to be and how that was going to conclude. So when we finally get to that point after trying to figure out what the solution is, I was not surprised by how things wrapped up. I just thought that was pretty obvious at least to me and so this one didn't have kind of that dynamic climactic ending like the first two did where you're just like shocked however the epilogue was impeccable and i could just read a whole book just based on the events of the epilogue alone and honestly i feel like holly kind of opened a few pathways to spin-offs if she wanted to so i wouldn't be surprised if we are ending up seeing some of the things that are a result 
of the epilogue. So yeah, it was enjoyable. I gave it four stars. It's sad because I'm an emo binge even for not my favorite series whenever there's an ending, but it was a good one. So I haven't read anything else yet today. I've just been typing, 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 and I'm not gonna read anything before the movie because I have to leave in like 30 minutes. Hello! So it's been a hot minute since I last talked to you. I think the last clip I filmed I was about to see Frozen, which so good. It's now Sunday and I wish I could say that I've like gotten a lot of reading done or something, but I haven't. However, I have started a book. I have started The Guinevere Deception by Kirsten White. I am like a hundred pages into this one, exactly. The Packers are currently playing behind me. Actually, I don't think playing is the right word for whatever the hell they're doing right now. And since it's so bad, I've decided to ignore them and go back to my book. So the Guinevere Deception, I wouldn't call it a King Arthur retelling necessarily, but it's taking place in that world. I don't know enough about King Arthur to say like what it is exactly, but basically Guinevere is sent to Camelot because King Arthur and the city of Camelot have banished all magic after he won some kind of battle with a dark queen or like a magic queen. And because of that, he had to banish his friend, mentor Merlin. Again, I don't <laughs> know any of this, but he had to banish him because he's like a wizard thing. But Arthur is like pretending to not like Merlin anymore, pretending that he wanted to banish him. And so Merlin sends Guinevere, whose name is not actually Guinevere, to go and marry King Arthur. She is pretending to be a princess from a faraway kingdom in the south who had been and living at a convent when in actuality that princess who had been at said convent had died and they just made everyone think that this girl was Guinevere. So she is there to protect the king from some imminent danger and Arthur is the only one that knows she's not actually Guinevere and that she is practicing and going to be wielding magic even though it is banned. So that's the gist of it but I feel like there's going to be a lot more going on. Like we don't know Guinevere's actual name name yet. And she has very foggy memories, so I just feel like there's gonna be a whole bunch of things revealed. Some of the writing is making me think that we might be being led to think one thing when another thing might be happening. I don't know. I'm trying to speculate, but I also don't have much yet. But I am enjoying it. Not much has really happened yet. We've kind of just been setting things up. So I'm excited to see where this goes. And yeah, I'm gonna read instead of watching that bullshit ass game. <sighs> I had a dream. I got everything I wanted. But when my wake up, I see you. And you say, as long as I'm here, no one can hurt you. No one like me, but you hurt you. If I could change the way that you see yourself, you wouldn't wonder why I'm here. They don't deserve you. Hi, friends. So, I just finished the Guinevere Deception. <sighs> this book was so good. <sighs> I just loved everything about it. Mostly, I loved the characters. I love Guinevere. I felt that she could be a little naive at times, or at least too focused on things too quickly. She would detect like something that could be bad and she'd be like, okay. I'll beat your goddamn ass, you son of a bitch. You're an intellectual dumbass, and I'm coming. And like, solely focus on this one thing before even like really finding out if it was actually like a bad thing or not but i think that did fit her character as a whole because she is just kind of thrown in to protect arthur and not really knowing like what she's doing not really knowing what she's going to be protecting him from and her character as a whole i just think she is so sweet she's so gentle but also strong and ready to jump into action i just loved her perspective the way she looked at life people. I loved her friendship with, I can't remember how to say this character's name, Brangian, I think that's how it's B-R-A-N-G-I-E-N. 
Brangian, Brangian, but she acts as like her maid, hand to the queen, whatever you call that. And the friendship that forms between the two of them is just so beautiful. There was also kind of two possible love interests for Guinevere, and very rarely does this happen for me, but I loved both of them like i was enjoying her interactions with both and while i did have a preference slightly it almost didn't like make sense i was like the other one would make more sense for this and this reason but i'm also really drawn to this character so i was just con frickin flicked i think that just shows like how great this was written because i like never normally feel that way also speaking of superb writing is the way that king arthur is written he is this character who is very 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 beloved by his people and he's kind of described as when you're in his presence and when his attention is on you it feels just warm and good and happy and you just kind of feel this respect for him and somehow Kirsten White wrote him not only to make us see that his people feel that way but she made me feel that way about him like anytime Arthur was on screen I'm like oh my god I don't know why I love him but I do there were just times when he would be like so happy and just a joy and I wanted to hug him and I just I was so in love with him I really really loved him I don't know if the plot fully had me hooked all the way through I would say I was definitely there for the characters but I am a very character based reader as we know and there was this element of the plot that I was like for sure was going to be revealed and it wasn't although I still feel like it will be and I can't tell if it's supposed to be obvious or not I feel like it kind of is I was talking with my friend that also read the book and they also thought the same thing was going to be revealed so part of me is like yeah okay you're supposed to think this and then part of me is like but are you so I, I guess I won't know until the next one but that apparently stopped me from seeing a completely other plot twist that was coming and I literally you can ask Whitney we were on FaceTime I literally out loud said what the fuck because I was shook I did not see it coming at all and it just brought in a piece of the plot that I think was kind of missing for me that I didn't see like the connect of how it was gonna get to that point if that makes sense I don't know it just brought everything like into the picture like we're done playing games now shit's gonna get real and yeah the writing was great the characters was great I was absolutely enthralled by this I did not want to stop reading every time I picked it up unsurprisingly I gave this five stars and I cannot wait for the next one and I'm glad that this turned out to be really good because I was highly, highly anticipating this. If you don't know, Kirsten White also wrote the Andi Darkin trilogy, which is a retelling of Vlad the Impaler. And so I think she's just proven that she is the queen of retellings. Everyone else can step aside. Happy Thanksgiving, mother truckers. Is my eye look popping? I just used my frozen palette for the first time. It's from Colourpop. I got the Anna one because if you haven't heard, I'm obsessed with Frozen too. We have like an hour until we eat, so I've decided to just give myself the day off from captioning and anything because it's freaking Thanksgiving. I have been reading Crier's War by Nina Varela. This is a young adult fantasy novel. It's about this world where long ago some queen who could not bear a child asked her like scientist to make one for her and they managed to do so and in this present day the people that are made have taken over so whereas i think humans kind of used the made people for their purposes it's now flipped so like humans are kind of like their servants and all that stuff and there's like obviously hostility and everything and the made people which i don't really know how to like explain it because i don't think they're really robots they're just like people that were made and they like only have to survive on like something i don't know it's a it's a little confusing but basically we flip back and forth between two different perspectives one is crier who is one of the made people and she is the daughter of the king i don't think he calls himself a king but like basically ru ruler of her kingdom or whatever and the other perspective is Ayla I think that's her name I don't know if that's how you say it but it'd be Ayla 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 I think I say Ayla maybe both but she is a human and her family was killed by Cryer's dad's like army's order or whatever and so her biggest goal is revenge she wants to kill Cryer to make him hurt the way he made her her hurt but when Isla gets the chance to be a servant inside the palace and become closer to Cryer she kind of realizes that she can be more to the sort of human revolution that is trying to take place and so that 
is the setup. We have these two opposing forces coming together. Pretty sure it's gonna be a romance, so I'm looking forward to that. I'm 126 pages into this and I don't not like it, but I'm not in love with it. I feel like there's been like so much world to set up and it hasn't been the most interesting just because it is a little confusing. And I really just kind of want to get into the characters because the little that we've gotten of them together so far, I've already been more intrigued than any other part of the book. So I'm waiting to get more of them. Otherwise, I'm kind of struggling to pay attention sometimes. Like they'll be talking about political stuff and like my mind will just be like, mm. but I'm hoping that once we kind of stop having to like explain more things and set things up that it will just get better. It's decently long. It's like over 400 pages. So yeah, we'll see. I want to like this because I've heard good things. Yes. Yes. Time is Vinci. Is it Thanksgiving? Is stop your begging, ma'am. You're going to get your own food. Your dad already stole some from you. Yeah, I Oh, Look, I have two things. There's bangs. two of them. I know. Oh, sorry. You want to open this? Can't open it. <laughs> I just love wine so much. Like, I love wine. Fine. How much do you want? I love um, wine. Okay. It's sparkling grape juice. I love wine. Bindi, you have had so much food and you're still begging. Yeah, uh-huh. You can turn away from the camera all you want, but they still see you. And you can't have chocolate cake. I'm sorry, but you can't. You can't have chocolate cake. Can we just talk about how this one man has the entire Western genre. Anyway, I'm getting this book. When at Barnes and Noble. Say hi, I'm here with Ashley. Hello. She's the one that took me to Hamilton, so she's great. Yeah. <laughs> hi friends. Well, I just finished Crier's War. The beginning of this, like I said, it was very slow and confusing and it just had a lot of, I guess, world building to do, but it was not done how I would have liked, I guess. I just felt like it was a lot thrown at us all at once and it made it kind of hard to get into the story. Plus the concept of being made and all these like different terms. Like there's this guy who's one of the, the autumn that's what they're called, the like made people. And he is going to be like, Cryer's fiance and his name is like Skyer Kinnock but like they call him Kinnock so is Kinnock his first name and if Skyer is not a name is it a title and what does the title mean I don't know so like there's definitely things that I still have questions about regarding this world however I would say after like the 150 mark this got really good it started focusing more on the characters and their motivations and what they had going on rather than building up this weird world and so from there I I really liked it. I really enjoyed the characters. I love Cryer and Isla's relationship. I thought it was so beautiful. This was marketed as enemies to lovers, but it's more of like a one-sided enemies to lovers. And it's not like Isla really has a problem specifically with Cryer. She just wants to get revenge on Cryer's father. And she hates like all the Otome. So it's not like a personal enemies to lovers either. But I thought the two characters discovering each other and they their inner monologues of what they were feeling was done so well. The plot was really interesting. There are a couple twists that definitely shook me. And there was also really subtle things revealed in a way that wasn't like, oh, shocking twist, but it was just written very well. The writing was great. So I think once you get past the sort of very strange world and the complexness of it, it becomes just a really interesting fantasy novel with great representation. Obviously we have a female-female kind of relationship. And I believe both characters are women of color and I thought something that was interesting is like they would observe people in same-sex relationships and it wasn't like treated as odd so clearly it's just a normal thing in their world it's not something to be looked upon like oh they're gay but there were definitely things that could have been improved on but I did end up really enjoying this in the end and I'm looking forward to the next one so I'm giving this bad boy four stars I'm really interested in seeing how this plot is gonna go from here. So that is gonna do it for this vlog. As you'll probably notice from the title, because I think I'm gonna call this like the pre-vlogmas vlog, I'm gonna do vlogmas this year. I posted on Twitter like, oh, I kind of want to do it, but like it would be boring and no one wants to see it. And then a lot of people said that they would, which is very nice of you, even if you were lying, it was very nice. So I'm gonna try it. I don't know how well it's gonna work out. I'm thinking this will be posted tomorrow, which is the 1st of December, and then vloggy vloggy miss for real we'll start on the second which is 
I think usually how it goes anyway. Either way, I will see you tomorrow with a video that probably will not be nearly as interesting as this one. And this one probably wasn't even all that interesting. Why do y'all even subscribe at this point? I don't know. Okay, I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.